companies that are utilizing it to help drive are the ones that are much more transformational and having more success. Hey, what's up YouTube? Jeremiah Hersey here. And today we're going to be talking about how to create a measure to find the prior year profit. Now, in the last few videos, we've been talking about iterator functions. We've talked about filter context. We've talked about how when you use the calculate function, it's going to override the filter context and allow us to modify it to what we want. And we saw that in the last video when we were looking at specifically blue profit. So today we're going to look at how to create a measure that's going to find the prior year profit that's going to work at whatever level within the hierarchy that we create. If you want to follow along, there's a link in the description to download the PBIX. Let's go ahead and get started. So here we are where we left off. We were talking about the blue profit here. I'm going to go ahead and fix my visual here. And I'm going to go ahead and put in just the profit. And we're going to be looking at, let's look at the fiscal year. So we're going to drive the fiscal year into the rows. So we can see here that we now have our different years with our associated profit. Now, once again, this is filter context. So the filter is the year, and then it's breaking down our profit measure. So we're going to create a new measure that's going to find the prior year profit. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go over here to our measures table, and we're going to create a new measure. And we're going to call this measure the prior year profit. So what we want to do is we want to look at whatever the current row is. So if I'm in 2014, I want to look at the profit for 2013. If I'm at 2015, I want to look at the profit for 2014. So because the way that Power BI works, right, each one of these is a filter, right? So as it looks at this row, the filter is blank for the year. This filter is 2013, 2014 and so on. So if we're going to be looking at a previous row with inside the visual, we have to modify the filter context. And so as I'm in 2014, I don't want to look at 2014. I actually want to look at 2013. So anytime we're going to modify that filter context, we're going to use a calculate function. All right. So we're going to go up here and we're going to type in calculate. Now, what are we trying to calculate? Well, in this case, we're still calculating the profit. So I'm going to use a square bracket to call out to my total profit measure. Now, it's asking us, what is the filter that you want to apply in this case? Well, we're going to use time intelligence function the same period last year. So notice the same period last year. It's going to modify wherever we're at in the current filter context. So if I'm at 2014, it's going to go back to the same period last year of 2013. Now, the only thing that we have to tell the same period last year function is where our dates are located. Our dates are always located in the date table, date column. So I'm going to select the date table, date column here. And we're going to close up our calculate function. So prior year profit is the profit from the same period last year, wherever we're at in the current filter context. So we're going to go ahead and return this. Once again, measures can only be seen inside of a visual. So we're going to go ahead and select the prior year profit. We're going to add it to our visual. Now, what you're going to notice is that some of them are working. Notice here that these few are working, but we start to get an inconsistency when we get down here to 2016 and 2017. So it's a little confusing because it's working for these three years, but not this one. Well, the reason for that is based on our relationships. And that's why it's super important that you understand how the relationships work inside of Power BI. So if we look at the relationship on our date table, okay, it's based on the delivery date key. Now, in this table, okay, there are two different dates. Now, watch what happens here, okay? So, 
fiscal year, okay, we selected fiscal year. Fiscal year could be multiple years combined into one. So the problem is not that our measure is incorrect, it's that we're using the wrong field or column for our year. We actually want to put the calendar year in the row section, not the fiscal year. Notice when we do that, our values are now matching up correctly. So it is important that you choose the correct fields from your tables as you're using them for filtering. I want to thank you so much for joining me in this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. I'll see you in the next one.